Hey guys. Um, it is a super yucky, well, it's rainy and cold and windy outside today. Um, and I've woken up, well, I had to take some pictures down. Um, and now it's all, it, it, my friend said that it messes with his OCD because it's all glitchy. Um, that I've just seen some more that I need to take down. And that's actually part of the reason, that is the reason why, um, I just got the urge to start vlogging, was looking at those pictures and thinking, yeah, this, like, is harder to talk about than, this is so, so much harder for me to talk about than, um, getting, like, told that I had bipolar, um, whatever that means, as I still don't really know, um, but, like, I think the way the world looks at mental illness right now is like it goes on in the head, kind of, like mental. mental. Um, and whether or not that's true, I, I am yet to like know. But what I know for me is that definitely, definitely, like there is no doubt about it in my mind that the thing that triggered it, tri triggered my pain, whatever it is, whether it's a, a mental illness or I don't know, uh, was definitely, definitely just matters of the heart. Like, it, it had nothing to do with my head. My head isn't the problem. I, I can, um, I can talk, I can write, I can, you know, understand, like, ideas, fine. But when it comes to matters of the heart, I'm sensitive, as I think we all were once upon a time, until we were kind of, like, forced not to be. Um, but I realised that, yeah, it feels so much more vulnerable, like, it makes me so much more vulnerable sharing my experience with heartbreak um, than talking about, because when I can, when I talk about uh, bipolar or whatever, I can intellectualize it. And like, that's my defense mechanism is to build like an intellectual mask wall or whatever. Um, and I sound and I come across strong when I talk about that, I believe to some extent, because I'm sure of myself. But when it comes to the matters of the heart, like, it's been broken multiple times and even though it heals it it's, like, it's gonna make me cry like it it's it's where I'm my weakest you know but I but I say that I wear my heart on my sleeve and that's exactly what I intend to do because I do think it's the I think it's the best way to be because as you know as a wise man once said you ain't ever gonna burn my heart out like the truth is no one no one person could ever actually burn my whole heart out you know like they can take they can t they can extract all the juice from it they can like vampirely like suck all the blood out but the nature of the heart is it keeps pumping and like until i until i die like the heart will always have the capacity to recover and to revive itself but i think what happens for a lot of people is they never it hurts too much to talk about it or to actually face it like if it's a broken heart, then there's, that's a really good song. It goes, if it's a broken vase, replace it. If it's a broken arm, then brace it. If it's a broken heart, then face it. And that's what I'm doing. And the reason I'm talking to you about it um, is that I also want to be a good example. And like, if I can do it, so can you kind of thing. Um, and part of the reason why I think this particular heartbreak has been so hard is because it felt unnecessary. Like when I, I I have always been very, despite how it might seem that like I'm talking openly, which kind of seems like I don't care. I, I deeply care and I've always been a people pleaser. Like I've always listened to what people said and I've tried to like fit what I call a template to like do the right thing and live the right way. Um, because I want, because I, I thought, because it was that I wanted to make other people happy, but I also believed that I would just be happier if, like, people liked me. But, like, si like simple, you know? But, um... But I learned, I learned the hard way that actually no one else can... No one else... Maybe people can read my mind, but no one else can actually, like, read my heart, you know? Like, properly. Or at least no one but maybe the people who share it with me. Like, if I fall in love with someone and they share my heart... Maybe then they know, maybe then they know that part of me as well as I know myself, I don't know. But the temp, what, what happens is like, there's different relationships, I believe, in life. And, um, you know, you've got your parents and they'll have varying degrees of 
influence on you but probably from before you're born they've already got a template set out for what they want you to look like and it will either be just like them or like what or like what they wished they had been right and like your parents in my belief will always love you but they may not accept you because they want you to fit in with society because we live in a social world and like being a textbook parent is is important to a lot of parents because they don't want to feel like they didn't do the best by their kids and um you know they want they want to feel like they've given you the best chance in life I suppose that they could I th I think it's kind of this is I'm kind of just using my own experience but also taking things from what I've heard the thing between acceptance and love I think is huge and I think that we can if we're always pursuing our parents acceptance we might never even see how much they love us um okay then you've got your friends your friends to me are like an extension of your own mind and templates of the world and that goes down to every single one so you'll have the majority of your friends that will agree with you but normally there'll always be that one that disagrees or that puts you in your place or that sets you straight and sometimes we're making difficult decisions in life like like whether or not to stay with someone um you could you could end up listening to the majority and ignoring that minority or if for whatever reason in that particular instance the majority disagrees and the minority agrees maybe you listen to the minority but like um in some strange cases like the one i found myself in the whole world either strongly agreed with the decision to break up for uni which is like like this is a case that i think loads of people have like um you know break up or stay together for uni like that literally ev everyone was like it's the right thing to do to break up uni and to be honest that was even being said from the start of my relationship like it wasn't I, I never got I didn't get to that template was already in my mind like before I even fell in love you know like it was already there um and the closest thing I got to neutral was my dad who said I can't tell you what to do you have to you have to decide this on your own but if you think about it as like a balancing scale it's like i've got all of these pluses like do it do it do it and then i've got one person saying duh and the only person who was saying don't do it was the guy right and so for me i could i i couldn't see i i couldn't i was not i did not listen to my heart and i'm not saying it was the wrong I, like i don't have regret like i think everything that happened needed to happen and i think i needed to come to uni and I needed to experience what uni offered and what society promised and realise that like it is not satisfying for me like it's not what I care about because affairs of the head are whatever they're fun and they're they're, they're cool masks and, and stuff but like I've done I've done you know I've been at three different schools and then I did my gap year and then I did work and I can see the way that people come and go and I can see the way that like most bonds in our lives are ionic, you know, they're, they're conditional and there's very few that are co covalent and for me it's like my family and then a few really fucking good friends and then, um, and then, you know, the, like the guy that, that, and the, those were the, those were the ones that I can see were always going to transcend space and time and situation because it's a soul bond, like it's so much deeper. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people, I think, could deal with this reality better than me because they got sucked into a new reality. So they would have come to uni and like got sucked into, you know, going for the nights out and enjoying the sort of like freedom, the freedom and, you know, getting with new people and all of that. And I I, I understand that and I respect it. And, I, and for all of you, like, enjoy enjoy but this is for the people this is maybe for the people who aren't able to do that who um for whatever reason you know matters of the heart trump i just watched hercules <laughs> and it was like yeah i feel i feel your boy you know you can have everything um and on some levels i believe i do like my my that a lot of do most doors are open to me like I'm a like most people at university very 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 lucky people right um and I miss my I miss my nobody I miss the nobody that I got to share life with and I'm gonna be honest about it because like 
pr pride has never got me anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Like pride is, pride and dignity to me are different, you know? Uh, dignity is seeing this guy, this homeless man who, oh, he's a legend, he's another story. Um, and saying to him, oh, by the way, there's some, there's some sandwiches there if you, if you want, like on the street. And him being like, oh yeah, nah, I saw them, they're soggy. Do you know what I mean? That to me, that's dignity. It's like, I'm on the streets, I, I'm hungry, but I'm not gonna eat a soggy sandwich. I would probably eat a soggy sandwich, I don't give a shit, but but then pride is like, you know, holding your shoulders back and standing and being like, oh yeah, nah. I don't know, that's how I see pride and like, I don't, I don't give a shit about that. Um, so I, I'm sort of saying this as it's actually come to an end, because like, in my mind this, The relationship ended when I came to uni and in my mind it was like just a matter of time until it started again because I realised very quickly that like my feelings weren't going to go anywhere and I realised very quickly how lucky I was to have had such a like special person. Um, and it took me a while to realise it but you know I realised it soon enough and I did what I could. And I said what I had to say, and I, well, I tried to say what I had to say, and it wasn't enough. Sometimes, sometimes the damage is just too much. And when you hurt someone's heart, when you shatter their heart, they, they close the, you know, they draw up the drawbridge and like, it's done. Um, and it's a really fucking hard reality. Like, I'm not gonna, there's, there's no smoke scenarios here. Like, I'm not gonna deny to you that that's a hard fucking thing to accept. <laughs> However, acceptance is the key word. Do you know what I mean? Like, I I just, I was literally just walking up the stairs, like, I had a bath and I was walking up the stairs and I was just thinking to myself, like, yes, I miss him. Yes, if I could, I would love to click my fingers and just be back, like, just, like, in our bubble, seeing the world through that lens. But then I thought, but here I am. And here's what I'm doing now. And how amazing are, like, the things and the dreams that I have for the next, like, you know, 18 months before I, like, probably, maybe, I don't, probably maybe go back to uni. We'll see. Um, and I just thought, okay, if I can't have him, if I can't share my heart with him, what is, what, what can I do and what can I have? And then I just saw all of these doors that are opening up to me and I saw all of these things and I just thought, well, I better fucking make the most of it then. I better fucking enjoy this time and not be looking back on this now in 18 months and going, oh, my life was so good then. I had no one to answer to. I had da 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 da. I wish I'd enjoyed it. Well, no, fuck that. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy it now. You know, I've done my morning. I've done my, I did, like, I literally did, ev when I say I did everything I could before, you know, it gets to the point where it's actually sort of overstepping someone else's life. I did. I, I even went and spoke, like, I went and to, I went on, uh, unannounced and spoke to him and I got pied, like, <laughs> literally completely pied in the face. And I needed to, and I and again I'm saying this because I kind of feel like I'm a bit of a nobody, and that I did that with I finally didn't even tell anyone. I just did it. I just went and I did it. The only person I was speaking to was Jess, um, number one girl, and I wasn't even asking her advice. I was telling her what I was gonna do. I was just telling her my thoughts, but like. I'm just thinking there must be so many broken hearted people who, you know, they go and they talk to their friends and they say, what should I do? Should I try and fight for it? Should I, should I say how I feel? And if all of your friends are saying no, I'm saying yes. Because, you know, I'm still standing. Like I did that. I fought. I, I'm, I'm open about it and I'm still standing. And if anything, it's so empowering to know that like the only people who might judge me for my honesty are people that I do not give a shit about. Like if you if someone decides to watch this and and is like oh my god like that's social suicide like why is she why is she be why is she say like why is she talking about things that you should only talk about to your diary then like.
good riddance. I don't, I don't care. I, do, I just want to, I just want to talk freely. Like I've got, I've got a voice, like I'm going to use it, you know? Um, so I, I feel like all I'm doing is like, I mean, I use, when I use the word bullshit to me, it's like a compilation of body and society because, um, I see, I see us as comprised of like mind, body and society. And, uh, the mind can kind of transcend higher to like a sort of more like divine state but then the body and society are very much rooted in the soil you know so when I use the word bullshit I really just mean like it is the shit that comes from bulls like the body's shit like it just stays in the grass do you know what I mean it's in society's thing and there's no there's no <laughs> there's no divineness to bullshit so um yeah it's a bullshit filter you know um so like yeah on that level kind of can't touch this but obviously, I, when I say I care, I do, I do, I really do care what, I care what people's humanity thinks, and I care what people's hearts think, but uh, when it comes to the, I don't know, bullshit, I, I, I believe it, sh it will just stay in the grass, that's where it belongs, you know, and it, and it has a purpose, it, it's good for the flowers, and mushrooms grow underneath it, which is good for the mind, so, it's necessary, it's a necessary thing, um, and how am I going to conclude this? I'm going to conclude this by saying that I would be lying through my teeth if I said that I'm not still, like, I'm not still in love in the sense of, like, no, I'm not, like, yeah, literally, like, there's still, it's like a part of m me is now walking around in the world in another body that I can't have contact with, and I, I just have to let it go. Like, I just have to let that part of me go because, like, it's been taken but my heart will keep pumping and more and more of me will be produced and I can't, I can look back and I can, and I, and I will, and I will be so fucking grateful for the good times and for the memories. And even though right now it's too painful to have them on my wall because like, it just hurts and I don't like there's there's an extent to which I think we should do that to ourselves one day you know I'll show my kids those photos and like I will never say a bad word about an ex I don't even like to call them exes because it's so dismissive because those people have taught me so much about myself and even if it's not always pretty like I'm so grateful um so so grateful and yeah to him in particular like I mean, that is, he is the person who taught me to love myself. And maybe that's why it's such a hard fucking pill to swallow because now I've got that. I don't have him, but I've, I've got me. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I've got to say. Guys, if you're in this situation or if you, I mean, every year people go to uni and like this happens so if you know you're about to go or whatever I'm not predicting it in the sense that this isn't going to happen to everyone but some people will make the wrong decision by breaking up and then some of you won't get taken back because you've hurt the person too much and if you're in that situation which is literally my situation maybe this is a video for you and the conclusion is take some time, this is uh, Oasis, which is kind of my Bible, take some time to make some sense of what you want to say and cast your words away upon a page. Think it, digest it, say it, and let it sail away. And then just fucking make the most out of your life. Like, if you're between, if you're between school and starting a job, these are, this is the golden pot time of your life because you actually have as many or as as much or as many people to answer to as you pick like you've got the opportunity to go to university and get a student loan you've been given that gift how you spend those three years at university is up to you and yes yes getting a degree getting a first say will get you something but to me the thing that I have got out of university more than anything and I've only been here for six months and I've kind of buggered off is the connections you can meet people at university who think like you, who dream like you. And with them, like you can change the world.
the world is i mean look at look at where we are today like look at what's going on it's a free-for-all i mean this this youth strike going on later this was started by a 15 year old girl just sitting outside the swedish parliament like we are so 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 much more powerful than we realize and so many of us are so chained up by social expectations and i think maybe that's part of this too is it's just me saying look if you've ever had that fear of someone coming into your room and reading your diary, well, what if I'm just saying it out loud now? You know? Um, and yeah, that that is it. Uh, that is it. Just fu- just fucking accept that in life you you're gonna ha- you're either gonna be in lo- you're either gonna have love or you're gonna have freedom. And if you've got freedom, you're probably missing someone. And if you're missing someone and you can't have them, then just make the fucking most out of life. Like, just make the fucking, fucking, fucking most out of your every single day. Even if that involves a ton of fucking whatever. Do whatever the fuck you want. It's not that deep. You're, do you know what I mean? Like, just live. Live in a way that you will be happy to watch back on the film roll when you're dying. When you're on your deathbed. You'll want to watch the film roll back of your life and be like, fuck yeah, do you remember when I did that? Oh, do you remember when I did that? And maybe if you live right, then by the time the right person comes along, you won't feel like you've got more living to do. You'll feel like you're ready to chain yourself up to that fucking bitch that is love. And stay there for the rest of your life. And smile at the people having their freedom and think, I've done my time. That is all. Um, I'm actually going to answer my first, like, I got a a question and I'm very excited. So I'm going to answer that now. But also, did you see how I just cry and then I stop? Like, when you're in touch, like, it it goes. And I'm fine. So that's my final message. I really want it to get to 22 because it's my lucky number. So um, one more thing to say. Um... One more thing to say. Okay, yeah, the weather. The weather. It's a rainy day. But literally, like, it is... This is such bullshit. This is just... I wanted to get 22 and now I did. Fuck the weather. I'm not going to talk about that now. Peace. Spot that. Come on still.